Noble Petronius, the ancient oracle of the sacred chickens will reveal the favor or hostility of the gods. Let us observe together how and when they take nourishment from the earth, our mother. Should the chickens eat, then the gods are in favor. Noble Petronius, the ancient oracle of the sacred chickens is favorable to your investigation of the death of Padanius Secundus, prefect of Rome. Thus gladly I send my report to the Emperor Nero, our Pontifex Maximus. The favor of the gods shall serve as a stimulus and guide for the difficult task ahead. Hmm. Back to work, all of you. Move. A most favorable oracle. You needn't believe in these things, but everyone will know about it, and that will be good for you. Mm. Perhaps a little too favorable, huh, Eunice? What do you think? I don't know these things. I only know what I saw. Ah, uh -huh. so you know nothing. How strange. Because I saw someone at dawn scattering my peacock's grain about the grounds. I wanted to be sure that the chickens were fed, well. <laughs> and you don't trust the gods? I prefer to help them. A sacrilegious declaration, dear Eunice. They could whip you for it. Give the order and it will be done. How can I whip anyone today? I've just received divine favor from the gods. I search for Lyja everywhere, for a whole day and through the night, but it's all pointless. If I do find her, what then? What do I do? Report her to the authorities? Punish her? Have her arrested? Well, it would certainly be within your rights. The hostage was assigned to you and she escaped your custody. Lyja wanted to go. She's probably far from here by now. I doubt I'll see her again. Don't think about it. She could be here in Rome. That's very improbable. Why don't you come back and stay with me? I need some help with my investigation. I mean it. I'm probably the person least suited for this inquiry. Why did Tijelanus insist with Nero that the investigation be placed in your hands? Because the less a person attempts to do, the fewer mistakes he makes. All slaves belonging to the household of the departed prefect of Rome, Pedanius Secundus, shall be marked with lime mortar for immediate identification, as they are all to be considered as possible suspects. An inventory has been drawn up based on documents left by the deceased. Slaves present in the house have been listed separately. They number 202. The scroll, please. By order of the magistrate Caius Petronius Arbiter, a guard shall be placed at each exit. No one may leave without written permission. Neither rooms nor furnishings nor objects can be altered or moved. Investigation. Scribe Isius, who actually discovered your master's body? Marsus. Since I sleep little at night, I keep watch on the house with the dogs. Hmm. With the dogs, that's interesting. So, the gate to the house was locked. The master held all the keys to the house. He could have opened it without me if he had wanted. I remember a light was burning in his study. And who was the last person to see your master alive, Isis? I, noble Petronius. I was. My name is Gito, Lord. Could you tell me if uh, there was anyone with your master last night? Yes, there was someone, my lord. I saw no one, but I heard voices. Two different voices. One was an older man's voice. Someone important, I'd say. Perhaps a senator or someone like that. I'm not sure. You said two different voices? Yes. 
The other one sounded like a foreigner. Cadanius investigated into almost everything. Look at all this. Have you seen this? It's his diary. Household accounts. No. The title of a book he was to buy. His thoughts, encounters. Ah, the obscenity of death. People rummaging through your things and you're totally helpless to avoid it. Let's go home. I'm tired. Today I interrogated Lyja Kalina, so-called daughter of Alus Plautius and Pomponia Grisina. She admitted nothing, but she is weaker than she seems. Having grown up far from home, she has learned to conceal her emotions. She has a certain talent for lying, but I don't think she can stand up under more violent pressure. Why would he interrogate Lyja? Seems it's too late to ask either one of them now. Isis, where is the file on the Christians? What file? The investigation the prefect was making. I know nothing. To the best of my knowledge, Pedanius was investigating the Christians of Rome at the command of the emperor. Perhaps he was only planning to make such an investigation, but never did. Yes, perhaps. Yeah, Peter, you have the document concerning the investigation. Christians in Rome. Well, you read it, Crispus. Read it out loud. The so-called Christians, whose number is estimated at approximately 2,000, Wrong. usually... The prefect Pedanius was mistaken. According to our own census, we must be almost twice as many. In any case, it isn't the only imprecision. You've already read it? The scribe Isis brought it to me, immediately, a few minutes after Pedanius' death. They usually gather secretly to celebrate the rituals of their evil superstitions, either in grottos or underground caverns, some of which they have discovered and some of which they've dug themselves. They seem bent on constructing a different, monstrous city underneath ours. We've identified the location of one of these meeting places at the third milestone on the Via Tiburtina. We'll have to abandon that place. It's dangerous. Mm. The aims of the sect are not clear, but they are certainly illegal and opposed to the regulations of Rome. They are led by a man who asserts he knew Christ the Galilean and received orders from him to found the sect. And yet they say the man is an illiterate fisherman. Well, that is the truth. I never had much to do with books. Some say that he is called Simon. Others say his name is Kepha, or Peter, they say. Still others are convinced that this man does not exist. What worries me most is how Padanius intended to deal with us. Listen. We feel the moment has come to strike down with the severest of sanctions this odious superstition. It's a disease that threatens to spread like a fatal infection, even among the highest-ranking Roman families. Noble Trivio, this is your lucky day. I hadn't noticed. Because you hadn't met me till now. In fact, I don't know you. But I know you, and I can tell you who you are. Marcus Vinicius, nephew of Caius Petronius. And I can tell you where you're going, to the house of Pedanius Secundus, to help your uncle in the investigation of the prefect's murder. What do you want of me? Nothing, but you might want something of me. Yes, that's true. I would like you to leave me in peace. Uh, certainly, Tribune, but perhaps you'd like to know why you don't sleep at night. Because you can't forget Elijah Kalina. What do you know of her? Oh, everything. And nothing. I move about, I rummage, I listen, I hear the confidences of slaves, gossip at the baths, the merchants chatter, the city's voices. Elijah's gone. She's far away. I wouldn't be so sure. What does that mean? That you saw her? It could be, it not be. Information costs money. I have my expenses. What do you want? I don't have much money. Oh, a man in your position? Ah. Wait a moment. I have my expenses. I cannot understand why you're having so much trouble finding the file on the investigation of the Christians. 
There are too many papers in here. I've yet to finish. You would ask to see us, my lord. Yes, I would like to know who usually carried your master's litter. Our most trusted men. I would like a word with them. You are the men who are assigned to the prefect's litter? Yes, sir. Yes, my lord. And you're the men who carried him on the last day he was alive? Yes, sir. Yes, I would like for you to take me over the same places, the same ground that you took him that day, making the same exact stops that he made. He stopped here? Yes, my lord. In the house of a courtesan? You're sure he went in this house? Yes, my lord. He'd been to see Epicurus. <laughs> How strange. I was thinking about you last night. Really? And I'm convinced you sensed it. <laughs> and I'm convinced that our thoughts are like silent voices. Perhaps. If a person doesn't know how to listen, then... Oh, you don't believe me. I can barely believe what I see, let alone what I feel. Oh, and yet there are things that we feel without seeing. Like men's desires. Yes, well, my only desire at this point in my life, Epicurus, is to get as far away from this city as possible. But first, mustn't you finish your book? I have more information for you. That's why I was anxious to see you. A delightful story. Oh, yes, the man who had the quarrel with Priapus. Yes, exactly, <laughs> the impotent one. I remember. Let's hear, let's hear. <laughs> Go on. Just yesterday, I learned that in order to be cured, or so he says, he went to see a witch wife who lives in the hut by the river. And? <laughs> Miracle! It worked! <laughs> <laughs> Triumphant, he goes to his woman, and the moment she sees him, she says, Well, my crippled friend, are you all cured today? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out at once, he says to her. Then a great night of love. <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Disaster. <laughs> You should have seen him yesterday while he was telling me about it. There were tears in his eyes. <laughs> right at the peak of things, the spell ended. No. And the woman was so angry, she turned her servants onto him with whips. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a splendid story, Epicurus, only I'm not here to gather inspiration for my book. And so? And so, I believe recently you met with a mutual friend of ours. Everyone in Rome is a friend of Petronius. Well, perhaps not everyone. No, I was speaking of a very important friend. If you mean Paizo, I haven't seen him in ages. And I'm sorry, he is a real friend. Why are you being so defensive? Because you're not honest with me. You're not telling me what you want to know. That's not how a friend behaves. Yes, yes, you're quite right. I was referring to Pedanius. I believe you saw him shortly before he was killed. Is that a statement or a question? I would be grateful if you would tell me what he wanted from you. What they all want. Oh, really? Now, I would like to tell you a story which very few people know. About ten years ago, before you arrived in Rome, Pedanius's wife, Flavia, asked him for a divorce without any scandal. It seems she found him with a young actor, a young Greek, I believe. You disappoint me. I knew a writer. Now I find a moralist. I have never cared or even wondered particularly who a person shares his or her bed with. It doesn't interest me. It's none of my business. But I would like to know why Pedanius stopped here that afternoon. If I insist, I have good reason, Epicurus. I was asked to investigate his death. Friendship? Or business. You could have passed him information about the people who came to your house and what they talked about, huh? No, never. That never. I swear. Then why did he leave a list of names behind? The friends of Epicurus on top of the page. 
and strangely enough, they're all friends of the Emperor. Paizo, Lucan, Scivenus, and Phineas Rufus, I believe. Do you know what this implies, Epicurus? A plot against Nero. Do you know how your friend Tigellinus describes you, Petronius? Tigellinus says that you're trifling. You're a trifler. <laughs> Charming word, trifling, and very descriptive. Investigations, he says, can only be carried out in one way. Yes, by torturing the suspects. Well, why not? Quite frankly, I myself have difficulty believing that you could be so ineffective. There are investigations, Caesar, where one must lose prudence. Ah, and since when have you started defending Petronius? I have always defended reason, Caesar. Thank you, Paizo. Since you've only been amusing yourself till now, Petronius, perhaps I can help you. Do you suspect someone? No, not exactly. No. Let's say a lead. A hint, a tiny clue. It was the day, it was exactly the day that this statue of the young Apollo arrived from Corinth. I was with Pedanius, and I remember how struck, how overwhelmed he was at the sight of the sculpture. Overcome with emotion, he slowly approached the statue. His hand trembled, just faintly but uh, visibly, as he began to touch the bronze body here, the hips, and uh, a continuous caress. <laughs> My daughter. So you want to kill him? It's the only way to save Rome. Hmm? Salvation again. Nero had himself called the world's savior. <laughs> and you would save Rome from the savior of the world? Yes. And others want to save us from all saviors. We've more saviors than beggars to save. told me you know everything. What are you going to do? First of all, I would like to understand. How far along are you? We're looking for others. There are only a few of us. An isolated act wouldn't solve the situation. We need support, Petronius. Epicurus' house is only a front. We use it for exchanging news among us. Is that how Pedanius found out about everything? Yes, Epicurus told me that you found a, a list of names among Pedanius's papers. There is no list. It was only a pretext in order to make her talk. It worked like a charm, Paizo. I learned that fear is one of the most effective weapons a magistrate can use.
ever find the courage to have another child. And you, to carry him inside for nine months, deforming your beauty. And me, risking, watching him grow with my blood inside him. Do you talk like that because you think I'm too old? Do you want to cast me aside? You made a grave mistake in marrying me. My throne is right for your beauty, but Nero is not right for you. But I have always loved you. Not I. Not I. I don't love you, and you don't love me either. You know what brought us together. I begot you with child. We had a daughter, but now she's dead. You already had a son when I met you. He's not mine. I'm alone. And only now do I realize that it's the condition I prefer. This house will never echo a sound made by my son. Oh, let me bear you that son. Stay close by me. Thrice. I seized the dagger thrice, yet I could not strike a blow. Three times I tried killing myself, but I couldn't be sure of seeing little Claudia again in the Kingdom of Shadows. Oh, what an honor for a poor Greek to receive in such squalid quarters the divine Petronius. What can I do for you? To begin with, you might try stopping all the flattery and perhaps stand up straight. Flattery? Flattery, you say? I loathe flattery, almost oh, wise of living men, true arbiter of every elegance. My heart blushes. Why are you closed? Ah, because I was selling cooked food. The magistrate made me close for two days. Nero forbade the sale of prepared foods, but I didn't know I don't I... believe ignorance of the law is an excuse, Kylo. Well, true enough. So come back tomorrow, when we reopen. You're a hopeless idiot, Kylo, if you think I came here to drink your watered wine. You didn't? No. I came here to see what your place was like. And also to see what the appeal might be to a man such as Pedanius Segundus. As a matter of fact, we used his litter to come here. What did Pedanius want from you? I know it uh, doesn't sound possible to you, but we met every now and again, the prefect and I, to discuss philosophy. Ah, philosophy, was it? Yeah. Well, what is a philosopher like yourself doing in here? <laughs> I often ask myself the same question. Oh, I imagine you would. And, uh... How do you answer that question? That if I had lived in the days of the great Messinus, patron of the arts, today I would be living in a house paved with gold. Perhaps in your next life, Kyle, uh. if you believe in such things. <laughs> but for now, instead, you... Instead, I've only managed to buy myself just one slave. A rather stunted slave, I'm afraid. So you say Padanius, on the night he was killed, stopped by to discuss philosophy. He offered me news of Liger for a price. Yes, he's an informer and a procurer. These days, my lord, a poor philosopher to survive is often obliged to engage in humiliating business. Yes, yes, of course. He's not a bad man. You mustn't do him any harm. Harm? Why should I harm him? Who asked you anything? Shut up! Silence! He couldn't have killed the prefect of Rome. He lacks the courage. I think it's best to tell me what you know, Kylo. Or I'll be forced to ask Tegelinus to question you, and he can no, be no. very persuasive. No, no, not Tegelinus. No, please, not Tegelinus. You can't do that to me. No, 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 no. Well, then, say what you know. Yes, yes. Go on. The prefect Pedanius, uh, let us say I sold him information. Yes, well, that far I got. But you don't know the information he bought for me. That well, that's precisely what I'm trying to ascertain. He was never satisfied. But that evening, he said, you've done me a great service. You can count on a thousand sesterces. A thousand sesterces, you understand? And then they kill him on me. Oh, and now who's going to give me a thousand sesterces? Look, Kylo, if you don't start talking, I may run out of patience. 
For Daniel said that a hostile sect wants to take over the city and spread evil. The Christians. They're rabble, slaves, laborers, quarrymen, the crudest, most ignorant plebeians. They preach poverty because it's hard to find anyone else poorer than they are. This hardly comes under the heading of news, Kylo. The Christians have been around for years. Kylo Kalonides doesn't sell false information. I've discovered that this foreign sect has taken root also in a Roman family. A patrician family, a very important one. First it was just a suspicion, but now I have names and proof. And ask your woman about it, noble tribune. Speak with Lyja Kalina, if you can manage to find her. <gasps> Marcus. <sighs> Lyja. Nobody knows I'm here, only Eunice. She let me in and gave me this. She won't tell anyone, not even Petronius. Why'd you come here? What happened? The soldiers came. They were looking for Isaeus. The scribe. They said that in Palestine he killed a Roman sentry. Everybody who could ran and hid from the soldiers. At first I ended in a cellar, but I heard them coming and took to the woods. It was raining and muddy. Where would you live now? I can't tell you that. Why? Are you afraid of me? I don't know. What does that mean? <gasps> you ran away. I could have asked to have you caught, but I didn't do it. I isn't that enough for you to trust me? It isn't my decision. The people who help us, how and where. We can't tell these things to anyone who isn't... Anyone who isn't a Christian. Is that what you were going to say? Yes. <sighs> Lija, if you wanted to go back to your country, be free and not have to hide in the cellars and in the woods. Why didn't you leave? <sighs> Is it possible you don't know why? No, don't. It's only the wind, don't worry. Nothing can happen to you here. Petronius won't be back until dawn. Ever since his daughter died, Nero's afraid of the night. He doesn't want to be alone. I prayed that little Claudia would get well, but it didn't help. It's chilly here. Put this on. While praying for Claudia, I remember that Jesus one day saw a man coming toward him, filled with sorrow. My daughter is dead, the man was saying. Come, I beseech you, lay your hand on her and she will live. Seeing how much that man was suffering, Jesus then went to his house. Everyone was crying, but he said, leave us. The girl is not dead, but asleep. No one believed him. They said, what sort of prophet is this that can't tell life from death? But he took the girl's hand, touched her brow lightly, and she woke up. Why didn't this happen also for little Claudia? Why don't such things happen anymore? Oh. Perhaps because they never happened. Like all the deeds of the gods on Olympus. I heard those stories from a man who was with him, who saw with his own eyes. I know the man you're talking about. His name is... Peter, or Simon. But Danny Secundus was looking for him to question him. I know, he asked me about him too. He wanted to know if an old Galilean had ever visited my house. As if it were a crime to listen to him speak. Shh. I don't understand all this secrecy. Must you all hide? still cold? Yes. Here. It's all I can find. They keep the cupboards locked. <gasps> oh, it's a feast. I can't even remember the last time I ate. You can stay here as long as you want. You know that. I'll take care that no one enters this room. And they'll ask Eunice to find me a bed in the slaves' quarters. 
Petronius will pretend not to notice anything. No, that's not possible. I want to stay with you. And I with you? Not here in this house. I came to take you away. But it's the safest place. I'm not looking for a safe place. Where would we live and how? The earth is all about us. Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. You can't believe these things. I want to try to live like that. I can't stop you if that's what you want. Live with you! But I'm not ready. I don't comprehend the things you say. If you love me, you must also love what I believe. How can one love what he cannot understand? Don't leave me alone. Don't leave me alone! Go on, go on. What is it, Eunice? Hurry. Petronius is coming back. I have a feeling something serious has happened. Hurry, come. Oh. A strange night, this. Seems no one can get to sleep. Not even to Jelinus. He just discovered who murdered Pedania Secundus. Ah, here is our killer. He confessed all, from beginning to end. The whole sordid story. You'll never guess why Gito murdered his loving master, Petanius. Out of jealousy. <laughs> Imagine. Go now, Marcus. I've things to do here. She left. I tried to persuade her to wait. They came for her and she went with them. She asked me to give you a message. It was strange. I couldn't understand it. But I memorized it. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. What does it mean? I don't know. Why did she ask me to give such a message? I don't know. Vita repeats what her people taught her. Foreign people, enemies of Rome. They filled her head with words, told her that only they possessed the truth. She thinks she's free, instead she's a slave. Mind, you have to choose very carefully, noble tribune, for you see, gladiators, oddly enough, are divided into three categories. Cowards. Their legs wobble with fear. Their premonitions about their fortunes are cataclysmic. They're good for nothing but moaning. Just, just, just look at Rhodus there. He has so little faith in himself that he's dictating his will to his son. Then there are the athletes, like that one, standing there. No, 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 he doesn't drink. Healthy diet. They look around to see who's the weakest. Then come the fatalists, my best clients. They eat, drink, make merry. They love life, and tomorrow they'll do their utmost to conserve it. <laughs> drink! Drink! What do we need a gladiator for, Kylo? What? Are you asking that because you mean it? Or are you trying to save some miserable Sosterci or two? No, it just seems pointless to me. You must be joking, your descendant of Romulus. Christians are dangerous folk. They gather underground in an old temple of Baal, no longer in use. It is said that in their rituals, they make blood sacrifices and eat human flesh. If Lyja is a prisoner, as you say. Yes, it's what I fear. Then you do well. You have every reason to fear. Didn't you know that the Christians, not only through lying, but also with threats, capture the most innocent girls, if possible, from wealthy families, and they make them hand over money, hand over money as much as they can. And they keep the girls as slaves with terrifying threats of paternal punishment. If Lyja is a prisoner, as I was saying, it won't be easy to free her. A giant keeps guard over her. I wouldn't want to be alone with that ghastly monster who can snap a chain like nothing. Maybe we should wait. No. No, tonight is the time. All the Christians of Rome will be gathered there. No one will notice us. Oh, well, besides, you've nothing to lose. You'll pay me after the job is done, huh? Uh, you do have the money on you. Mm -hmm. 
six more brothers. Welcome, brothers. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, brothers. Brothers? Huh? Are you brothers? Uh, three brothers. Enter, enter. Uh, we come from, from far. I ask your forgiveness, for I have sinned of greed. I was a lender of money and demanded the same interest imposed by silversmith. I too have sinned. I bought a slave girl. Look at us. We are sinners. Wait here. If you've asked for him, I'll give you the signal. And are sorry for your sins. The Lord is good and shall forgive you. And we are ready, as always, to welcome you among us. Brothers! Do penance for your sins, for the day of reckoning is always near. The Lord sent floods upon the earth, but man did not repent. Do penance now, brethren. The merciful Lord sent his own son down on earth and is waiting for man to repent. Great will be the Lord's wrath if man shall not repent. He will send forth destroying fires upon the city of crime and debauchery upon the new Babylon. Woe unto the world. Woe unto sinners, for then there will be no compassion. Woe unto him who loved the creature more than the creator. Woe unto the mighty, and woe unto the lovers of wealth and luxury, and woe unto the debauched. Brothers and sisters, I repeat to you my wish in the name of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I bring you good news. Our brother Mark here has finished writing his book. And this is a great joy for all of us. And all the brothers who can write will copy it in scores and hundreds of copies, as many people as possible will come to know the words of God as it has been given to us by the voice of Jesus. And we who were the disciples of Jesus will read it, and even those who still do not believe will read it. And this will also be a joy for all. Everybody in Rome will read and understand the word of Christ. And this should be a joy for us. Because our faith is no religion of fear and terror. It's a religion of love and joy. The future is sweet. <coughs> yes. The Lord did rain down fire on Babylon. That's true. But for you, there will be mercy. For you, who have been cleansed, through baptism, for you whose sins have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, you will live. And when God wills, you will die with his name on your lips in peace.
I strangled him in the dark. He is right. He never leaves her for a minute. He's not her bodyguard. She's his prisoner. No, she's not. Finding out where she lives will be sufficient. No, think it over first, Tribune. You woman's a prisoner. You have to free her. And Crowder can do it in a minute. Don't let what you've seen deceive you, O oh, noble Tribune. Christianity's a complex cult with various branches. The meeting tonight was just meant to pull the wool over the eyes of the Gullibur. Ah, just leave me alone. They'll kill you. <laughs> he promised me 300 sesterces if we liberate Elijah. I have to have that money, all of it. Good night, Sirius. Good night. you off otherwise. Come with me. All right. Do it. Carry me off. I'm doing it for you. Don't you understand? Leave me alone. Leave I'm me doing alone. it for you, Elijah. Let go. No. Let go no. of her. I wanted to take her away. No. Don't touch him. Don't hurt him. Don't. Welcome to this house. Peace be with you. As a rule, my visitors are made to wait in the atrium. But an exception was made for you. Your fame precedes you. Do you really know who I am? Yes, I heard Seneca speak of you. I know that you are a Jew and also a Roman citizen. Oh, I understand that one of your sect said that man cannot serve two masters. Whom do you serve, Paul of Tarsus? The Jews or the Romans? I have been commanded to love my neighbor without any further specification. You are called an apostle. In Greek, the word apostle means one who is sent. Sent by whom, Paul, and why? I believe the Lord meant us apostles to be the last among men, like men sentenced to death. We the weak and you the strong. You the honored and we the scorned. Has it ever faintly occurred to you that your humility is the worst form of pride? I shall keep your words in mind, Petronius. You most certainly know what has happened to your nephew, Marcus Vinicius. This dagger belongs to him. It was given to me by a young girl whom you know. She asked me to tell you that Marcus is well, that no one will harm him, and that he can return whenever he decides to do so. No one detains him. I see you don't renounce the opportunity to display your superior humanity, and you're very convincing, I might add. Perhaps you might try selling oriental carpets. I've done that too. <laughs> Well, I'm sure you haven't come here just to bring me news of a lovesick, foolhardy young man. People are talking of a proposal that someone has made in the Senate. It says that to punish the murderer of Pedanius Secundus, all of the slaves of his household must be put to death. All of them, whether men, women, or children, are to be crucified. Yes, yes, it's an ancient law. But alas, it's still a law. If a slave kills his master, then not only he, but all the other slaves must die with him. Laws are made by men, and men can change them. You are the closest to Nero. You can talk to him. It is he who decides, but one can influence his decision. That's true. But I don't think Nero 
will understand the validity of your words. I cannot assume a responsibility that is not mine. I lack uh, strength, and I lack your conviction. You know very well, Petronius, that none of us lives only for himself, and no one dies only for himself. Our fate, yours, and mine also, is somehow connected to the fate of those innocent human beings. I didn't make this law. But we can unmake it. Up until now, Petronius, we Christians have lived in this city hiding our faith. But now I will ask all the Christians of Rome to bear witness in public and before the world to our hope. We will pray for the lives of the condemned slaves and for the salvation of this city. Let me go. You do what you must. And God be with you. I don't see the problem. I'm being asked to make a decision. But where's the problem? The crux. The basic point of your reasoning. What is it? General feeling is that the crucifixion of so many slaves would be a sacrifice that the gods would not accept with favor. And the people are afraid. Mm. They fear the vengeance of the gods upon the city. That is true. They are all afraid. That's why they cover your statue in the Senate with flowers. That's why they say that only you can save them from the wrath of the gods. <sighs> they await you, Caesar. They want to hear your voice change the law. I could climb up on the rostrum, facing the Senate, with my white and gold toga. The crowd shouts my name. With a gesture, simple, gentle, yet imperious, I call for silence. Silence falls. A look, a deep sigh. Then I say only one word. Clemency. That's it. Clemency. That is exactly the way to answer those who accuse you in the Senate of squandering public funds, of not economizing. From an economic point of view, sparing the slaves' lives would surely be profitable. For who among us would be so foolish as to kill a herd of hard-working oxen? Is there anyone anywhere foolish enough to destroy such wealth? And isn't a slave worth far more than the ox that pulls a plow? A slave costs his master surely at least a thousand sesterces a year, and that's just for food, clothes, and lodging. Not to mention his education, teaching him a trade. A slave is an investment we must safeguard. We must not underestimate this vital component of Rome's wealth. Your decisions, as always, are sustained by motives that transcend the mere obvious. Your act, Nero, 
is more than just clemency. Sparing the lives of these condemned slaves will be as not only a firm reply to a critical senate, but above all, as an adroit political maneuver. An astute move, Caesar, that shall be remembered in the history of your reign. I have a question to ask you to those who make up the Imperial Council. Speak, Cassius Longinus. How many slaves should one have to feel secure in his own house, seeing as Padanius's 200 slaves were not enough to ensure his safety? Caesar, there is subversion going on in the city. The Christians are out praying for the salvation of the slaves. They have made a gigantic cross of fire on the ground, and the populace asks that you show mercy. Fire and cross. Obscure, violent symbols. <laughs> a fire and a cross. I'm alone. And no one will help me. Thank you. 